Hello everyone, today we're gonna be building a super budget $200 gaming PC using parts from AliExpress. The result is quite impressive, so hit the like button and let's start. A $200 gaming PC is definitely a challenge, so I think I should settle down with the GPU first and then add the rest. The PC will go to my friend and he mentioned that he wants to play Rust and other online games like Call of Duty Warzone. Think I'll go from there. After browsing through AliExpress, it was pretty obvious that I should go with the RX 580 2048 SP. There are many brands, I went with a version from Melsi for $60. It came really well packed in a branded box. Inside we have the GPU itself. It looks pretty good, quite stylish. We also have some paperwork and even screws for mounting. RX 580 2048 SP is the mainstream GPU on AliExpress right now. And it's no wonder, for $60 you get 8GB of VRAM, pretty good performance for 1080p gaming and even though it's a 5 years old card, it's still getting driver support. The GPU looks good, it has a dual fan cooling, a plastic backplate, you can see 8 pin connector as well, and on the back it has 3 displays and 1 HD my port. So now let's find the motherboard kit. There are many options but considering our budget I went with the optimal $47 kit. In the box we have SATA cable, screws with thermal paste, an IO shield, two sticks of RAM, a CPU cooler mount and the motherboard with the CPU pre-installed. The CPU that we have here is Intel Xeon E5 2650V2. This is a server CPU from 2013 that has 8 cores, 16 threads, 2.6 GHz base frequency and 20 MB of L3 cache. Now obviously it's not new, I can even see some old thermal paste, but as long as it works I have no complaints. It is installed in a no-name motherboard, motherboards like this are manufactured in China especially for these kits. And I can't really say anything bad about it. It's a well-built motherboard and it has everything we need. 4 RAM slots, although we're gonna use only 2. SSD NVMe port and PCIe Express 3.0 slot for the GPU. On the back it has 8 USB 2.0, Ethernet and audio ports. We also have 16GB of RAM included. Each stick is 8GB and looks like it's from HP. It is a server DDR3 memory and it works on 16 100 MHz frequency. Not impressive these days, but still very capable. I'm installing RAM in green slots as it shows on the product page. Here's what we have so far and I think for $47 it's a pretty good value. Let's move on. For cooling I picked the Tau cooler from Ego. It looks pretty good. I'm surprised the heatsink didn't get any bends during delivery. It comes with a 3 pin RGB fan, has two heat pipes and costs only $7, which is a pretty good deal. I installed the mount that came with the motherboard applied included thermal paste, it's not the best but it is absolutely fine to use it. And we are done with cooling. For the storage I got a 512GB Gen 3 SSD from Kingspec. I could have gone with 256GB to save a buck but considering the games 512GB is an optimal amount. SSD is installed, the only thing the motherboard is missing is a CMOS battery. But that's not a problem, you can find this battery in any store. So far I spent around $140. I got some pre Pretty good deals but now I have $60 left for the power supply and case. All the stuff that I got from AliExpress makes sense and can be delivered internationally, which is a huge plus. But I think it's not a good place to buy a power supply or case due to lack of options and shipping costs. So for the case and power supply I will be using this Roseville FBMX 400 Helix, which I got from Newegg for $50. It is a simple but decent case, we have a basic front panel, magnetic dust filters, a rare exhaust fan but most importantly it comes with a 400 watts power supply pre-installed. 400 watts is definitely not the recommended wattage for the system but that's the only way to keep PC under $200. I had no issues building PC, the motherboard installation is pretty standard although it has an unusual layout so the product page with all the information is very helpful. I rerouted all the cables from the back and connected everything. GPU is installed and the system is ready for the first start. Everything is working but I also noticed some clicking sound from the GPU fans. With further inspection I discovered plastic cracks on the fans. It might have been damaged during delivery, ironically the GPU was packed better than anything else. Luckily AliExpress has buyer protection so I'll be opening a dispute with the seller. So that's a big drawback of buying from AliExpress. Despite it being great with international delivery, it is possible to get damaged product. Luckily GPU is working fine so I just glued all the cracks and the noise 
went away. I then installed Windows 10. Our system does not meet the Windows 11 requirements, but that's not a problem at all. Windows 10 is still great. Next I installed all Windows updates and AMD drivers. We don't have a Wi-Fi module, so I'm using USB Wi-Fi adapter. It costs $5 and works very well. Overall, the system feels very responsive, thanks to our SSD. The speed benchmark looks good, SSD even has LED indication, and everything else works as expected. One noticeable thing about PC with a server CPU is that it doesn't really have a sleep mode. If you put the system in sleep, all the fans will continue spinning, but despite that, it still makes sense to use it. In idle, PC uses 85 watts, but in sleep mode it drops to 60. I'm a bit concerned about how this power supply is gonna handle the system, so let's run a stress test. After 15 minutes of IDA 64 stress test, power wattage stays around 235 watts and the PC runs pretty well. The temperatures of CPU and GPU were under 66 degrees all the time, which is pretty good. Let's check some of the benchmarks. In Cinebench, CPU scored almost 4900 points, which is pretty impressive for a $5 CPU. In 3DMark, the PC scored 3600 points. During the benchmark, both CPU and GPU temperatures were under 50 degrees for most part, so our cooling working very well. Let's now move to the games. I'm starting with online games, which probably will be played the most. In Valorant, with high texture settings, I see around 100 FPS most of the time. Frame time is not perfect, but it is very playable. In CS2, with low settings, gaining 60 to 90 FPS range. In this game, our GPU is definitely not showing its full potential. You can see GPU load is jumping a lot, but it's still playable. Moving to Fortnite, with high preset and 66% 3D resolution, the game looks very nice and runs with a pretty stable around 75 FPS. I see some micro freezes once in a while, but overall, GPU stays at 100% load all the time. I decided to test with performance mode as well, and I got very playable over 100 FPS. I truly enjoyed the game experience in both cases, and even won the match. In Warzone, with the recommended performance preset, which uses FSR upscaling, I see pretty playable around 55 FPS. I then changed the settings to low, with native 1080p, and in that case, gaining only around 5 FPS boost. But I think the game looks a lot better, and you can see enemies more clearly even on high range. Next game is Apex Legends. With ultra textures and no effects, I see FPS in range from 70 to 120, depending on the scene. The game runs very smoothly and you can see the frame time graph is pretty straight, so definitely a great game experience. In PUBG, with medium preset, native 1080p, frame rate mostly stays in range from 60 to 80, with some drops to around 50 in loaded scenes. The frame time is not the best, but the game is pretty playable. In Rust, I had to play with the settings a bit, and the best result I got was 60 to 70 FPS most of the time. You can see the settings on the screen. GPU load drops once in a while, but overall the game runs smoothly. The game is actually pretty demanding. I saw RAM use at 14.5 GB sometimes. Let me know if you want to see it in regular benchmarks. As you can see, PC is definitely able to run online games. You have to find the best settings for each game, but despite that, it is very impressive for $200 gaming PC. Let's now move to single player games. Starting with Elden Ring, on low preset I see around 45 FPS most of the time with some drops to 35, 40 in loaded scenes. The game runs pretty well. The next game is Cyberpunk 2077. With low settings and FSR in performance mode, it runs at around 55 FPS for most part, but in loaded scenes FPS can drop even to around 40. With FSR in performance mode, game objects looks pretty good in close range, but everything on high range is kind of blurry. Anyway, it's still a playable experience. Next, we have Spider-Man Miles Morales, and here on low settings, native 1080p, I see very comfortable around 60 FPS while swinging and around 40 FPS in loaded scenes. The frame time is not perfect, but overall the game is very playable. In God of War, with low preset and FSR in performance mode, I see FPS in range from 40 to 70 depending on location. I think we tested enough games to say that it is a really impressive $200 gaming PC, so if you are looking to build with a low budget, AliExpress is a pretty reasonable option. It has its drawbacks, such as long delivery, the possibility of getting damaged components, and no power supply and case options, but overall it's not bad. Let me know what you think about this PC in the comments, and if you are looking for a gaming PC with a $500 budget, check out this video on your screen.